Say hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, this is my dad, Joe, and I'm the other Joe. And we're up at the, the spring because he wanted to come up and see it. And uh, a few things of note, it's, what is it, December 27th, 28th? Something like 27th. that. 27th. And we're at the spring. And my part one video, there was water flowing around the little dam here. But now all the water's flowing in there. Which means that's probably more like 15 gallons per minute. So when I was up here the first time, it was probably after a, an extensive wet period, I'm guessing. And that would explain why it was flowing so much and now it's reduced because we haven't had a whole lot of heavy rain recently. So it's now all flowing through there and down into the, into the bucket there. So it's down to like, well, we can measure it because I left the bucket here. Let's measure it. So for reference, I've done this a few times in previous measurements I've gotten was 15, 11, and I think in a previous measurement that I never actually recorded, there was before, there was lower than that. But let's see what we do. Uh, go. So that was about 30 mm. seconds. So I just did the calculation that's 10 gallons per minute times 255 feet, which is the average I got from the first video, and times 0.18, and that's uh, 460 watts of mechanical potential power here and you can ignore the efficiencies. And you can see, I'm sucking a little bit of air. Right there you can see some bubbles. So I'm sucking air out of the bucket here, which is working really well. You can hear the air sucking too. So, not much fine silt in there. You can see the the pipe there. It's kind of heavier silt that's this rocky stuff here. Huh. Okay, that's interesting. So I guess on the bright side with this filter bucket it does show that it's working. At least in the uh, month or so that it's been up here. So that would maybe be a viable method of capturing this water if I decided to go that way. I still want to try digging this out and collecting all the water right there where it comes out of the ground and not from this basin here. I had a video previously and I'll put it up here in the corner of me trying to find the property corners to nail down, you know, who owns this spring. And I was correct. And I just found the stake. Every time I was looking for a stake, I'd be standing, you know, there's a spring there, and I'd be standing here looking for it. Or other places. But no, it's hiding right here behind this stump. But it, and it's not orange. So, <sighs> there it is. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the property lines look like. I'll put a picture up somewhere around here to show you where they are approximately with relation to this. And that'll be a guiding point as to where I can put my water line. And I think that the person who owns this property, and we'll see if the picture is correct, owns from this pipe down diagonally down there. Or somewhere, let's see where the edge of my property is. It's probably right down there. And this guy owns down about a quarter of the way down the hill. And then it's this other guys that I've gotten the, prop, the permission to run the pipe across. So it's likely that I'd be able to actually run the pipe almost from the spring there, straight down this little valley, which would be preferable because that'd be fast, straight shot down um, using the least amount of pipe. And I wouldn't have to be trying to drag pipe like diagonally around a bend or across trees and whatever so it'd just be a straight shot down so that's that's good i'm really glad that we came up here 
to look at it. Hopefully we don't get rained out because there's rain coming. There's a little landing right there. It's at, this is a little logging road and it goes diagonally down that way. If I got permission to get an ATV up here, I could park it easily right there. Bringing up the, the pipe because the 300 foot roll, and I think I would do the 300 foot at the top, that's uh, 150 pounds. That's 125 PSI pipe times 300 feet at two inches. So here's that little landing. I didn't really explain this before in the previous video, but this is a, another logging road that comes up diagonally. So my house is down there. There's another diagonal logging road down there. Get that level so I can just stick it right in there. Yeah. Yeah, stuff doesn't really move. I'm just going to see if I can get the bucket in there. Okay. Yeah, not really. Have to get it back another this thing here can move. Oh. It can move. There we go. We could put it further back up here. That's what I'm going to do. There we go. I don't think the bucket will fit there still. So. So I'll give it a minute to fill up now because we're higher. Yeah. So that'll take care of any of the air bubbles, right? Maybe. <clears throat> that, we raise this up a little bit. Let me see if I can get the marker there. Yep. Still not <laughs> level. No, I'm hitting things here. There we go. Now I think I can just slam the bucket under there and not get anything. Yeah, that's Almost. There's still another rock there. That's... Well, that's okay. I can get it under. I can set it in there. It's almost level. Okay. A little bit too much. Here, you know. A little smaller rock. No, there we go. Uh, go, go ahead. So just a, a final recording here, and I'm going to have time on the screen you can see. There we go. That's a good accurate recording. This is a video of my first ever hyperlapse recording on my cell phone showing the descent from the spring and its utter junk but it will serve as a suitable background for a special thanks to my Patreon subscribers, Alex Benz, Michael C. Darcy, Alex, Richard Shaw, Zeppelin, Johnny Tallinn, Hans Petterfield, Blair Hames, Brian Jackson, Sean O'Connor, IT Gardner, and my PayPal supporters, James Hensley, Andrew S. Ford. Links for these methods of funding are in the description. You help me fund advantageous projects like buying 800 feet of 2 inch pipe equipment and supplies for all of these projects and video recording. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that old footage. I thought it was sort of an incomplete video, so 
here's something to complete it. I'm down here at the bottom of my spring water system. Well, it's not my wa spring water system, but the spring water flows across my property right here. That's where it enters. Um, and I'm down here by the house. And I have this filter bucket that I had used previously in an old video when I was playing around with that micro turbine. And you can see it's just full of silt. And the silt was clogging up. And ultimately in a, a big system, you don't want any silt running from all the way up there, down the hill through the pipe and hitting the turbine because that'll wear things out. Uh, silt at high pressures and high velocities acts more like an abrasive. So today I'm working on uh, a prototype filtration system that I can use up the hill, but I'm working on it down here. And that'll involve this pipe, which is a collection pipe that I'm just gonna stick in this stream there. And that pipe's gonna run down here to this lower area. Sorry, you can't really see the, the 3D, but there's about two feet of drop between there and there. And that pipe's gonna go into this barrel and just stick around to see what my idea is for taking care of silt. I'm not trying to keep silt out of the bucket, out of the barrel, but I'm trying to get rid of it from inside the barrel. And the first thing I have to do is dig this out and dig that out a little bit and make a, sh a short like collection dam just to force everything into the pipe. I'm testing to see where the pipe ends up on the bucket so I can cut a hole. And here I am cutting the hole. I'm trying to go in reverse because as soon as it catches it will grab and twist the drill. You'll see that in a moment. And I see it caught. And I'm going reverse. And a little bit forward put it the rest of the way through and this is a hole for my delivery pipe that goes downstream again going in reverse except for the last little bit and then this will be for my special silt removal pipe that's a three inch unit seal it just pops right into the barrel and I had to scrape a little bit of the sanding off of the end of the pipe because it was still rough. But that didn't work. I still could not get the pipe into the barrel. So I went down to the shop, I sanded it with 220 grit sandpaper and here I'm adding a little bit of dish soap. pop right in. Here I am trying to pull the pipe out a little bit because it went in too far. All right, I've now captured, you can see some soap bubbles in there. That's from the soap that I used on the pipe. And I'm now capturing 100% of the stream. Okay, maybe 
99%, there's a little bit leaking by, but it's good enough for now. And I'm now realizing I should have put in the bottom bungs before putting water in it. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do there. I might have to just take this all out again and then put it back after I put those in. Here I have a bulkhead fitting from my old uh, cat litter bucket, which goes right in there. And then there's a foam washer of sorts. And then this is, believe it or not, reverse thread. So that kept screwing me up, uh, pun intended. I sprayed these down with WD-40 before I use them. I can't reach to both sides, and it's really cold in here. So there's so much water flowing, when I cover the end with my hand, it creates a cavitation pocket. Listen. Now, I did bring up two different sizes of this uniseal. Um, I brought out the three inch and then this is one inch. And I was gonna put a one inch in there, but well, I told you why I couldn't do that. So this will be for the silt sucker. And then I, because this is gonna restrict the flow too much and I don't want it to needlessly overflow the dam and erode it away, then I'm gonna put another one of these size holes. We'll put it over here. And that'll allow any extra water that isn't being consumed by the pipe or the silt sucker to, uh, to flow out. And I didn't get my drill wet, so that's good. my pant wet. So the way the silt sucker is going to work, I have to cut this off shorter. It doesn't need to be hanging out, dangling that long. And I have to go get a 90 right now. I'm going to put a 90 on that piece sticking out there and it's going to go all the way to the bottom. So any silt that does end up in here is going to be sucked up by that pipe that runs all the way to the bottom. Now a few things that I might need to change for this to work. I might need to redirect this to be more of a, a vortice and the silt sucker would be in the middle because if you ever do a, a vortice in a bucket with silt or whatever in the bottom of it, you see that all of the stuff creates or collects right in the middle. And of course that's where the silt sucker would be most efficient. Also, I didn't realize when I put that in that I put it like all the way at the bottom. I could have put it up another few inches but right now I think I might have to put a 90 on that that comes up a little bit so that it's not potentially sucking silt from the bottom of the barrel. All right, now I've got that overflow plumbed down to the bottom, I can just close that up and then you can kind of see it in there. Sorry, there's a lot of glare. 
just sticking all the way down to the bottom in the middle. And that should be a silt sucker, I hope. One thing I could try doing to get a little bit of rotation is to rotate the whole barrel because this is a, a pretty flexible joint <clears throat> and the pipe sticking out is also flexible. And it looks like the water here is shooting out that way. So if I can get the water to kind of want to spin this way by rotating this a little bit. I'm going to put 245s on the bottom of the intake also in the hopes that that will encourage a little bit more of uh, vortice also. It's unlikely that that amount of suction would do much, but it's worth a shot. It might already be forming its own, like, sort of vortice on its own anyways, and I can't really block enough sun to get in there. I was looking at my plumbing parts and I found this 90. I know it's PVC on ABS, but I'm not gluing it, so it doesn't matter. I'll just straighten this up. <clears throat> okay, so now it's not spinning at all. I can try putting that there. And that might make enough of a, a vortice, or I might have to cut this off. Because right now it's just shooting at the edge of the barrel. But it looks like it's spinning somewhat. And I just turned that up to see what it did. Well, look what it's doing. Let me put it over a little bit further. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to cut that off so it's more of a 45. Because it's, it's just, it's going into the side of the bucket too much. Okay, I Cut this down a little bit, so it should shoot more off at a 45, we'll see. Yep, pretty much looks like it is. There's only... Try pointing it down, we'll see what it does. There's only a little bit that I can see kind of wanting to flow back. And there's clear, clear flow in that direction there. So that should really help. And I think spinning it down might reduce the amount of um, might reduce the amount of turbulence in here. I guess we could try manually adding some silt now and see what it does. Hmm, where would I find silt? Oh, look, I have a bucket of silt right here. Oh yeah, look at that stuff. Alright, that's sufficiently silty. And we can see that the water coming out of the silt sucker is dirtier than the water coming out of the, the overflow. So that's excellent so far. And we'll see what it looks like in a few minutes. Okay, I, I can't see the bottom. I have something to cover the light here somewhat. And you can barely see that there's some stuff still in there but I think by nature the stream itself is just a little bit dirty because it's flowing um, high average for winter I'd say because we just had a lot of rain and snow melt um, but for now I'm just gonna cover this up and leave it for a while and I'll update you guys in the future and for now I just have this piece of foam that I'm gonna stick on here with a rock and that should keep any leaves from getting in there and fouling it because it's okay for silt but not for leaves so we can find a suitable rock that one's a little bit big how about one of these 
I'm probably getting ticks on me. Yeah, yeah that should work for now. And because I like playing around with this sort of stuff, I have this shooting at this tree. And I have a, another video, I'm gonna put it up here, of doing a similar thing with a lower pressure, uh, lower height hose. So I wanna see how much ice we can form. Just a giant pile of ice, that'd be cool. Subscribe, like, comment, Patreon, PayPal, Amazon influencer shopping list. See you around.